Good morning. I suck at praying. I know that's not necessarily what you want to hear from the person who's going to provide you with spiritual guidance from the week, but it's true. I am usually sitting where you're sitting, actually right over in that area, admiring the amazing prayers shared by the prayer team. They're always eloquent, thoughtful, heartfelt, and compassionate. Sometimes I feel like they can read my mind and are sharing the words that are in my head in a much more eloquent way. I'd like to thank the prayer team, um, all of the members, Rob French, Nancy Lafferty, Mary Friend, and Doug Niptash for what they do each week to inspire us. There you go. I've, I've even been known to stalk one of the members of the prayer team at Oak Hill. Now, the first time it happened, my oldest son was writing his college essays, and I thought that the prayer would be some kind of inspiration for him, um, since my nagging wasn't working. And um, so I ran up to the prayer giver right after the service, and I gave my business card, and I said, could you give me a copy of that prayer? And he looked at me, and he said, who are you? Um, that's when I became known as the prayer stalker. Praying is just not easy for me. Even a few weeks ago, when the horrific tragedy unfolded at Sandy Hook Elementary School, I found more comfort and solace in the words of others than any words I could come up with on my own. Now, if you know me, you know that words usually come easy for me. I love to talk. I even love to write. At one point in my life, I wanted to be a writer for Saturday Night Live. But there is something about talking to God that um, makes me feel intimidated like I need to do it right, or I need to do it perfect. You see, I have something that I call prayer ADD, for attention deficit disorder. It looks something like this. God, thank you so much for the beautiful day today. Hmm, wonder what the temperature is going to be tomorrow. If it's warm enough in the morning, I may take the dogs for a run. Oops, sorry, I'm back. Thanks for my great family and for a job that I love. I don't really love my job every day, but I love it most days. Today was a pretty good day. I'm so glad that I finished that project. I really am looking forward to some time off. I need to think about where we're going for spring break. I definitely want to go someplace warm. Darn, sorry again. Come on, Betty, focus. God, please help my friend Lisa, who is having health problems and is really struggling right now. Gosh, I really should take some food to her family. I wonder if they like lasagna. I could make that tonight and then pick up a bag of salad on my way to her house. Yeah, that's what I will do. I'm going to go downstairs right now and make some lasagna for them. Oh, amen. Thanks for everything, God. Because of this disorder, I've done a little research on prayer that I'd like to share with you. But truth be told, the biggest inspiration came from the most unlikely of places. In fact, most of what I learned came from unlikely places. I told Stan and Linda a few weeks ago that I have a message in my head. Actually, it's been there for a while. Um, a few days later, I found a Bible verse on Facebook. So I know I'm not building credibility if I suck at praying and I find my Bible verses on Facebook. <laughs> but I have to tell you, it was kind of an answer to my prayers. So this is our Bible verse for the day. It is from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to be thankful for answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. My understanding is that prayer is like talking to God, having a conversation, not just acknowledging it. When you talk to God, you can give praise, give thanks, voice your, your concerns, ask for guidance. Something I read recently about prayer from virtualsalt.com was that God is your friend, so that you can talk to God in the same way you would talk to a friend. In your prayers, you can use simple language, and you are free to express not just praise, but confusion, questions, doubts, worries, frustrations, failures, and so on. That concept of prayer in simple terms is beautifully illustrated by a few prayers that were shared with me by Jerry Toomer. He's, he sings in the Oak Hill Band. The prayers were written by his father, Ed, who, is a, who was a farmer in Iowa. On August 9, 2006, he says, Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful weather it takes to make a good crop. 
Thanks also for the fellowship we share in honoring another birthday of our country. Bless this food, in Jesus' name we pray. On May 23, 2007, he wrote, Heavenly Father, thank you for 87 years of pretty good going. Thanks for helping us share with each other the love that we have and the talents we have to make our relationships valuable. Thanks for this food, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We ask for your blessing for Don Elk in his effort to regain his health. These prayers are beautiful in their simplicity and their honesty. This is just a farmer praying about those things that matter most to him, his relationships, his friends and family, and his crop, and the gratefulness he has for all that God has given him. So according to our Bible verse, we should pray about everything, tell God our needs, and don't forget to be thankful for answers. This part about thanking God is really where I get intimidated. God created everything. Where do I even start to be thankful? I read something recently by Brett Critchever, a rabbi at the Indianapolis Hebrew Congregation. He says that the basic theology of gratitude might go something like this. What if you woke up tomorrow with only those things you thanked God for today? It's a kind of way of prioritizing all the great gifts that we get from God. In reality, if I were to really thank God for everything that I'm grateful for, I wouldn't have time to do anything else. Rabbi Critchever goes on to share some words that are common in Judaism as a way to formalize our gratitude. He says, Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who has given us life, sustained us, and allowed us to reach this moment. Don't get me wrong, I think these words are beautiful. And I, and I believe them from the bottom of my heart. I just don't think like that. I truly am grateful for the life and the gifts that God has given me, but I need to give that thanks in my own way and in my own words. Kids are great at this. They have th this way of talking to God as if he is a friend and in a way that's, that's just honest and genuine. Stan shared with me, uh, Stan from Oak Hill, shared with me the prayer that he and his family do each and every night before dinner. Um, you'll recognize part of it, but there's some modifications that I had never heard that were inspired by his son Harry when he was very small. He says, God is great. God is good, and we thank him for our food. Bite his hands, we are all fed. Give us now our daily bread. Almonds. Our pastor says almonds when they say their dinner prayer. I love that. Several years ago, our family was traveling in the car, and my husband and I were in the front seat, and my two kids were in the back. And in between them was our two-month-old lab mix puppy that we had just gotten. His name was Jack. Uh, and the kids were going on and on about how cute he was. Look at his little nose, and he's got the little white tip on his tail, and see how furry he is. And at one point, my youngest son looked down at the dog, looked out the window of the car, and said, Good job, God. Two thumbs up. And to this day, that is my favorite way of showing gratitude. I find myself, um, when I see a beautiful sunset or a beautiful flower, or taste an amazing piece of chocolate, like the salted caramel hot chocolate at Starbucks right now. Um, or I find a pair of jeans that actually fits. I think to myself, good job, God, two thumbs up. So with this as an inspiration, I'd like to invite you to do a community prayer with me. You'll see green cards that are on your tables, and I'd like to ask you, what do you say good job, God, to? What do you say good job, God, two thumbs up?